welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with the interview series presented by WFPK at WFPK.org, Consequence and the Consequence Podcast Network. Thanks as always for making your way here. Of course, check out the series. If you like what you see, what you hear, hit that subscribe button. I, uh, I put out three new interviews every single week. It's a new one every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So it's a great way to keep up with your favorite artists and discover the new ones as well. All the usual spots in podcast land that include Spotify, Apple Podcasts. You can grab us at NPR, WFPK.org, or of course, right here on YouTube for the video versions. But anywhere you get your podcast, subscribe to Kyle Meredith with. And that's me, Kyle Meredith. Today, excited to be talking with John Baisley of Baroness. They are back with a brand new record called Stone which finds them tackling some uh, new sounds for them and some beautiful sounds and some unsettling sounds. And we're going to talk about it all. Hello, John. Oh, I got in easily. Yes. It's always a good day when Zoom starts correctly <laughs> and the right camera. And, yeah. <laughs> I completely understand that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you, you do. <laughs> <laughs> what a powerful record that Stone is. Thank you. And great to hear you guys again. Um. What do I want to start with? Like, like maybe we just start with that song title because I feel like that probably speaks for something beyond just a title. I mean, I mean, obviously, maybe I should say not obviously, but this feels like getting away from the colors to more elements, although stone could be a color, but it feels like a word that probably says a lot with a little. Yeah, yes, I, I would agree with you there. And I would further that by saying that those are the type of titles that I gravitate towards um, for a variety of reasons. You know, practically speaking, I don't like longer titles. I think in, I think, you know, and, and I should preface this by saying like, when I when I have opinions like this, I, I'm only applying them to us. I think there are great, well-titled albums uh, in history. Many, many, many of them. So many, in fact, that when I've tried to, when I've tried to create compelling, pointed specific sharp focused titles i fall flat because I, I feel like it's it's i just never i don't have a knack for that you know some people are some people are graphic designers it's efficient communication for me it's like the more the more fine a point i try to put on my uh you know communication at that at that level the the weirder it gets and so i've always i've always enjoyed those titles that are either simple and um broad enough that that each list and this is what i really prefer is where, where each listener can find their own meaning through through the title because clear cl clearly the artist has a purpose you know and has a reason whether it's explicit or implicit or or something they're going to speak of or not i i find as a listener we take we take two things we take the album title and we take the uh the cover of the record and we we tend to find ourselves in in there because we don't nine times out of ten we don't understand the references and it's not really important that we do it's more it's more of a feeling it's more of a you know sort of a conceptual artistic thing so i think titles are great like that like i like you know zeppelin first four zeppelin records one two three four easy sure. <clears throat> and there's something that's got a unique fourness about four and there's something that's got a unique two-ness about two and a unique oneness to one uh, so it's not to say that those titles aren't applicable to to the music somehow in some, you know, in some uh, sort of a abstract way, but I like that because I can't, you know, because I can't come up with good long-winded titles, and because um, I really appreciate those records in my life, those you know, those creative pieces of music that aren't 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 explained in like a prosaic way to me to the point where I feel that my own experience is then invalid when listening to a song you know not to say that this that's always the case but when you listen when you listen to great great american songwriters like springsteen or cash or something and they're telling legitimate stories or or even you know like a great deal of like 90s hip hop i thought always had these it was like these stories about these people who are going through these you know like a, sto a story that has a beginning, a middle, and an end, and I, I, that's that type of songwriting doesn't come particularly easy to me. Uh, and furthermore, when you hear it, you, you as the listener, tr transport yourself into that person, so you are empathizing with this fictionalized character from a song, 
uh, that is a great, I mean, that's, that's fantastic. I had great experiences doing that. That's just not the experience people have with our music. That's not the experience I have writing. And I'm not, I'm not trying to, you know, from, from a lyricist chair, uh, I'm not trying to imagine some book, some fictionalized character or somebody else's life. I'm not trying to co-opt the things and that I see other people going through and trying to bring them into me. My goal with the titling, with the artwork, with the music, with, you know, with, with the level of, uh, with the type of art that we make, with the type of creativity we try to access, it's about it's about a personal, it's about telling a personal story. But in in a sort of I guess in the inverse way, when we t when I tell a very uniquely and densely and sometimes heavily personal story, I find that the language that that I use tends to become a little bit more poetic and a little broader and a little more cloaked in metaphor and, and symbolism in order that I don't give something too specific away but also because I think that that that, that the way I mean you know the way I, I approach these creative things and I know I'm still answering your question about the title incidentally um but <clears throat> for me it's 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 telling it's telling a, a deeply personal uh story in such a way that there is uh, the elements of universal apply to it. So, the if I if I'm able to dig in deep and introspectively and and you know relate some aspect of a story or some feeling of an experience, our audience and listeners will find those points of uh, congruity and points of synchronization with their own lives. But then expound on it and make something better. And I and so so to make a very short, easy, easily answerable answerable question, uh, somewhat longer. Uh, I think for me, it's it's because I'm telling a story that's so intimate for me. I think that addressing elements of universal and elements of um, broad are helpful for our listeners to get into that world. Because at the at the very end of the day, I'm not the story isn't like about that personal story of mine it's it's that i think that my personal story is everyone's personal story because we all feel frustration we all feel the stress we all feel heartache we all feel pain we all feel frustrated and lonely and isolated and all, all of these you know I, I again i tend towards the negative things that have happened to me and i've got plenty of them so it's it, you know there's no uh, it's a deep wellspring i'll put it that way but because of that, I, I, you know, I don't think that those things make me different. I think those things make me the same. And what am I doing as, as an artist through, through our music? If nothing else, I'm trying to communicate with the world that I don't have a better, I don't have a better form of communication with. I feel, you know, through, throughout my life, I felt quite at odds with the things that are happening around me. So, I think this music is a vehicle for me. It's a very important one. So even even when it comes to like a, an album title like Stone, see, I'm just trying to trying to bring this back full circle. Um, <laughs> It's got to have it's it ha it must have deep layers of meaning for me, but it's not. I, I'm not so presumptuous to think that, that my, my deep layers of meaning are, have anything to do with you or, or or interesting or anything other than pretentious. So, I'll hyperload everything, but then I I, I want to preserve or, you know I want to serve that on a platter to an audience and let them have fun with it. They want to have fun with it, but go deeper and you know try to try to pick apart that mystery. If if they're curious, you know, it's, yeah. it's like, I want to, I want to present something fairly to our audience, you know? That's all my favorite artists. That's what they do. You know, all my favorite artists, it's maybe you get a good top line melody or something, you know, to sing along. Yeah. To. And then suddenly you realize, wait a second, what, what's that line I've been singing that? What, what is it? You know, what is it? it that's the yeah. best thing, you know, when it becomes, when it becomes its own little mystery or its own little novel, you know? And Right. And so we, so we as artists use these, we use tools like genre we use tools like style we use tools like the volume and tone and drums and guitars and voices those are they're all tools that we as artists use to serve our need for self-expression so yes a, a an engaging optimistic melody sometimes is the best thing in, and the best uh you know breeding ground for a a song that has depth and has emotion and has difficulty in it because this superficial sort of or, or artificial aspects of music, the stylistic conventions, the technical stuff, the, the craftsmanship that goes into, into those, those are, those are simply 
a different type of hook just to grab the listener. And all we're trying to do is, you know, and of course, this is all done in a, in a, at, a, at a subconscious level, but all we're trying to do is capture your attention long enough that the real important thing that we're doing, which isn't necessarily beautiful, which isn't necessarily uh, sublime and mellow and, 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 and or fun or, or dance worthy, we use all of that stuff so that we can inject our, our deeper meaning into that. And then, and then the listener can have this juxtaposition between, you know, the sweet and the sour to, over, to vastly oversimplify what we're doing or what everybody's doing in, in order that the, the, the experience is unique, you know, like, like if the goal was just to write pop songs, then, then throw all of that, throw the whole conversation out the window. It, does, it doesn't matter. Then it's just about creating like a fun experience for you to dance to, you know, like Will Smith songs uh, of that era. Every summer something would come out and it was just the song of the summer. Hey, yeah, sure. whatever. Uh, you know, there was a there was a great history of like fun summer songs um, that have nothing to do with the way that I make music, you know, and and I and I struggle with that for or, or I was at odds with that for many years uh, as a as a younger musician and artist. And that I thought that. The, the idea of creating songs just for fun was was like against what I was doing when in fact it's just a you know it's just a parallel line it sounds similar because there's guitars or there's vocals or there's a rhythm but ultimately we're not we're not you know a pop artist and, and myself are not doing the same thing right songwriters exist and it's fine we, can, we coexist in it and it's great and it's great and I, I just have you know I, I think it, for me it was just like growing old enough to realize that oh yeah there's some value to that music that i really was like against in the 90s yeah. um but there, there's some value there it's just not the same type of nutrients and vitamins and minerals that that the you know the stuff i used to sustain myself on was yeah no that, i mean and, and i talk about my favorite artists in fact i mean you know i like to surround them because even just a few of these over my shoulder with depeche and, and prince yeah. and rem like that's what I loved about him because you know and I relate this like like your song on this album uh, last word I feel like is a really yeah. good example of what's going on here because yeah, sure. here's a potentially great sing along and then there's so much more under the surface that all of these artists gave right here you know and and it ends for, up for sure for you know, sure. being an entry point for me on the record just because of that it it sort of opens the door for everything else yeah and I th and I think that's you know I I think that's it's it's interesting that you recognize that. Uh, you know, I will, I will say, and I think, you know, I think this is a bit of a lost art form at the moment. It's not gone and we're not uniquely interested in it, but I really have always thought that we create records when there's the, 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 the fact that there are track IDs in between, you know, the, the creative songs doesn't, sh shouldn't lead our, our listeners to think that that's, that's, and there's a bite-sized version of the record mm -hmm. um and that being you know like any one song the songs are part of a greater narrative that extend you know that extends across the length of the record I'm sure you know no no surprise there but then i think even the records themselves are sort of microcosmic uh moments of a much of, of a story that's even longer than that and that's if you, if you're the type of artist who just sees that through line from your very first work to you know wherever you're going in the future and i think you know i look at artists like like nick cave or pj harvey or uh you know radiohead uh you know maybe depeche mode a, a bit but like bands who don't like the idea of your band is broad enough that you can there, there can be stylistic shifts and there can be dynamic peaks and valleys but it doesn't that's not like oh this is the loud record of theirs or oh this is the quiet record of theirs like a a nick cave record is always even when it's a birthday party sort of an intrinsically nick cave record it's part of his story he's telling a tale that only gains that the, the, that third dimension when you listen to multiple records you know when you when you see when you see the development you can you're aware of that sort of thing, and I think that's—I think it's—I it's, think it's an important aspect of uh, you know of a lot of artists that that you don't try to focus your attention to to like three and a half minute servings because that's 
now we're talking about commercial music again. Now we're talking about pop pop music, which is where where it's fine. Where it's fine. Like if I was a pop musician and I wrote one great three and a half minute long song, then I can die easy because I, that's that's sort of the goal is just to create one timeless thing. Whereas I think when you're when you're a band or when you're an artist who considers things more in the band way, which is that there's a team, it's it's like a teamwork effort to create something that should be greater than the, you know, than the sum of its parts. Then I think you you're you're holding yourself to you're sort of playing by slightly adjusted rules. And then it's just it's about maintaining credibility. It's about developing your sound. It's about becoming more authentic and honest. I hate saying authentic or honest when talking about music, but to to concern yourself with with elements like authenticity and honesty in music and to to be predisposed towards focusing all of your energy on the the, the creative integrity of, of what you make insofar as sometimes i think we even write record and release songs that aren't very good because they're part of because they're the, the five minutes of them Sure. existing is is a necessary counterweight to something else and without this one piece which i find fault with you know which an audience member might find fault fault with or i might not think is the greatest song but it's but it's it is there as you know it's it's the dark to balance out some other light you know um and so i think i think you know we try to let ourselves be in that you know, to, to sort of harness that spirit whenever possible so that, you know, success is achieved before the record is released, you know, because, oh, creatively, we, we feel successful. Therefore, the rest of it's just, you know, icing on the cake. Sure. Uh, but, but the, you know, it's the, the act of, I don't know, maybe I'm, a, maybe I'm a bit more of like a, approach this a bit more from like a standpoint, like a visual artist or, a, or, you know, just like a fine artist. But the process of making is, is it this that's all of it for me uh which is why i always say you know we're 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 a live band because when we're live we're in the process of taking a space that's you know empty and silent and filling it with uh things that we create and i think the the, the idea of recording can be the same thing where the most exciting aspect of if the most exciting aspect of writing and recording a record is, is physically making it then that excitement's audible, and that and that that becomes a big part of uh, of the process. Which, you know, with, with our music and with you know quite a bit of music you've got up there, there's serious themes. So you have to take it seriously, but you have to have fun. You have to, you know, so it's this it's this balance of energies of you know being fired up and impassioned about what you do, but also trying to do something that people can understand long enough that you've gotten their attention and then and then you can inject something unique and something surprising yeah. uh in, in into their environment yeah i'll add to that too and, and watching what you all do specifically even on this record stripping everything away at certain points and it's still being so heavy at the same time yeah. i mean yeah. the, the album surprisingly to me ends or begins and ends in 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 the world of Americana, uh, just to yeah. you know put the the broad label on that, and hearing you all sort of do the folk thing, and for it still to be in the Nick Cave sort of way, you know, since you right. know, that's oh, a yeah, great reference sure. right there. Like he's a master at that. Like this is going to be something so rustic, you know, and yet yeah. you know, King of the Murder Ballads, and <laughs> totally. yeah, ab absolutely. It's it's just like I've you know we've we've had this career trajectory that's been really I think that is maybe the unique thing about us is that we don't quite fit anywhere um but that has given us the the independence and the sort of freedom to operate everywhere all at once to, you know or, or anywhere that we choose to and it, it allows us to take you know our musical creative instincts and just follow them to whatever conclusion that they lead us and we don't ever have to worry about ideas like will this upset the you know will this upset the orthodox uh rock listener will this upset the orthodox alt, alt rock or metal or hardcore listener you know it's not that's not important what what 
what what I had an idea many years ago. I don't I don't know if it actually worked. I mean, maybe, maybe I'm like in the I'm the wrong person to answer this question, but I certainly asked it, and I asked it of the group that whatever we do, you know, each record we put out is is essentially a statement in time, and each statement that we make should support the idea that we're growing, we're changing, we're evolving, we're adapting, but we're never letting go of what, you know, where we came from. Like it's, it's this idea of roots, um, which I think is a really funny thing, uh, especially with music journalists who, who love to, you know, there, there's this thing where we say like, oh, it's, a, it's like a return to roots, um, where I'm sort of like, well, wait, wait, but aren't roots like this, the one thing that is, inflexible aren't the aren't roots the, the one thing you don't have to return to because they're always there sure. um so you know so lazy it's, journalism it's, half the time but yes <laughs> yeah for sure i think what, i think what, what it i think nine times out of ten what it means is a veteran band trying to sound like new young bands mm -hmm. that's that's how i interpret it but because because i think i think like as, as a as a band uh, where you've got multiple members and everybody's operating in concert to create this, you know, to create music. Your roots are, they are the thing that needs to be constantly, uh, I mean, the, the, you don't, you don't need to do, you actually don't need to do anything. They're there. If they're not there, then they're not your roots, you know? Um, so our, you know, our roots were the, you know, had to do with the, the idea of expanding, the idea that, uh, our our you know trajectory or our musical direction wouldn't be a single direction. It wouldn't be you no. Know, this isn't this isn't a highway for us where we're here at the beginning and we're working towards the end. Um, the you know and and then it's then it's just like okay, well you got your sound and you refine, you refine, you refine, you do better, you do worse with it, but you're always moving forward, always moving in one direction. I say fuck that. I say why can't we be more galactic or universal and just expand from the center? That way we can always, you know, so to speak, and stretching this metaphor, but like we can always reach behind us and grab from uh, Americana and folk music, which is a huge influence on our songwriting. But we can also do things like incorporate greater, further elements of synthesizers or electronic music, or we can drag out from you know a more ex, you know the more extreme music zone that, that you know that we originally cut our teeth in we can take some of the energy of the you know those like insanely fast rhythms or insanely loud guitars again everything's a tool like the the only the only real instrument are the only real instruments in the band are the four of us it's what you know it's how we sort of extend our hands or our you know our muscles or vocal cords whatever to express ourselves so you know at, at any given point in time i want to be able to reach for my acoustic guitar and capable in, in order that i can capably express a heavy attitude or a heavy feeling or a heavy opinion and then further to that i also would like to have the ability to grab an electric guitar and an incredibly excited song and say something that isn't heavy you know it, it's 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 more that like i think there's expectations in music i think every you know we have music music is sort of a it's sort of like this weird artistic math where you've got real like you've got a real set of limitations there's only so many notes there's only so many mm -hmm. members in the band there's only so many so many combinations of things that you can do that are musical uh and as soon as you know as soon as we free ourselves from as soon as we recognize those limitations and we can kind of free ourselves from the you know the bondage that, that it seems like they could create and then it's then it, it's just purely like well just express yourself you know maybe maybe the expectation is that in a song that's like you know where the volume's cranked up to maximum there's everything's distorted maybe the maybe the expectation of that would be that the song is going to be something harsh or brutal or in your face i tend to go well the more sort of edge grit dirt you know harshness brutality there is in, in in the sonic realm maybe that's you know that is potentially the best petri dish for something that's really beautiful and really sublime and really tender uh because there hasn't there haven't been a whole lot of things said that way so perhaps we as a group of people who are looking for uniqueness and individuality maybe by subverting expectations 
we can get ourselves one step closer to being unique and being authentic and being genuine. Um, because, you know, as artists, you know, the trade that we ply is in taking raw emotion and filtering it through our kaleidoscope in a unique way that allows the listener and, and the musician to gain further understanding about that subject or about uh, it just it just creates environments where we can we can you know our hearts and our minds can open up in different ways and i i think it makes it only makes perfect sense that the more individualized that uh that transmission becomes then the more unique its response can be so it's it's like it's partially selfish because i i want to oh, i sure. want i want to surprise myself i want to i want adventure through the act of creation and you know having done this for so long it's it's like thrilling to me that i'm at this stage in our career and we still we still get really fired up about what we're doing because we don't i, th I think a large part of it is because we don't hold ourselves to uh standards and ideals that are technical you know we're not craftsmen we're artists so we can tell a beautiful story in a simple lo-fi way and we can tell a dumb we can tell toilet humor through sophisticated embellishments you know like everything's everything's on the table for, yeah. for, for a musician who thinks who operates like that and completely taking it out of context with lyrics it's it's interesting that the album sort of opens you know uh with one of the lines i've lost my way because that seems like exactly the opposite of what's going on here I'm like you know right and 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 to to that to that end i was entirely lost uh through the process of making this record on on you know in, in many ways personally in many ways mentally in many ways spiritually and physically there were things that were quite challenging but for, for me and I, I will i will walk the walk here and i'll put my money where my mouth is on this the music is therapy for me you know it is there is something that's tremendously therapeutic for it and uh you know since since forming this band, there has, as I said, there has been no lack of uh, personal challenges to overcome. So I, I think, I, you know, I thank my lucky stars every day that that I've got this creative spark, and then I've got this band of of uh, musicians and bandmates, friends, who, you know, who, who are more family to me than you know, creative confidants, and we get to work through our shit together and we get you know essentially take all the negatives and just through this weird alchemical sort of crucible like spit out something that is actually positive it's like the 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 denser the the denser that the weight of uh the tragedy the lighter and more brightly shines the response musically and i think that's been true throughout history so uh, you know again i just consider myself lucky to have found this because i don't know how i would deal with any of these you know i don't know how i don't know how i would find myself if i were lost and had no outlet like this you know yeah well you all you, the band mates as ingredients and the recipe that you all make uh, i mean this it's 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 so interesting like I said, I, I keep referring to a lot of my favorite artists, but that's what I, what you all do is exactly what I hope to get from art and music. And again, setting pop music aside for its own fun thing, sure. like choir, that track is the most unsettlingly <laughs> beautiful epic that I have heard in a long time. Well, it, it makes me feel weird. At it the does, same time, it it's like, it's also gorgeous, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, like, and that that's a, actually a pretty good example because, okay, so musically, that is an improvisation. That was, we, 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 it's part of a, the trilogy, the track before it, Beneath the Rose, and the track following it, uh, the Dirge, are sort of the beginning and end caps on that. Um, and what we, what we really wanted to do uh, with, a, and we did it quite frequently on this record, was, um for every moment where we're where we're o organized and coordinated and where where the music has to be orchestrated and there is a wrong or rightness to it for every we try we really tried to shake that aspect of songwriting in a group as much as insofar as we we're capable of for for a record like this 
And so choir was simply a tempo, a rhythm, and a key. And no one knew anything. No one, we, we just didn't talk about what, the, what that was, what that song was going to be. It was really purely an idea that we continue the sort of rhythmic ostinato from the song before and just see what happens. Uh, because that's, that's something we do quite frequently when we're playing live, which we, you know, especially when we're doing long sets, we'll finish a song and, you know, Nick and Sebastian are, are rhythm section. They'll just, they'll just sort of have a little fun. They'll like, they'll try out like a, a funk jam or like they'll try to, they'll try to just sort of ride one simple, cool, idea uh until and just to give the give the audience a break give the band a break give us all a little wind down after after intense music and so so what we want to do on this record was just include that but it's difficult to include um improvised material on a on a coordinated record that that has to be sequenced has to be mixed has to be mastered has you know has to go through this whole long process and ultimately goes out to the fans but it's not a live recording and i'm not interested in in the integrity of a live recording what I was interested in is the integrity of an improvisation. So we had the idea that you just, okay, here's the beat. Uh, Nick, our bass player, like it's this key. So he's like, oh, all right, just do the one note. And Gina and I had no formal discussion about, none of us had any formal discussion whatsoever in any way, shape or form about what the song was, where it was going or how to get there. It was simply a matter of exercising our chemistry, closing our eyes, like sort of just, opening up all of your you know musical senses and having a conversation with your friends in a very sophisticated level where there's questions at there's questions posed and responses generated there's multiple people working at multiple times on creating gentle subtle dynamics like a, a lot of sophisticated things that are hard to even articulate um but but because we had no roadmap we knew that we knew that every time we recorded it, we would get something new, and I and we and further to that, we we understood that the more times we recorded, the more we were going to square it up. So I think we I think that track we played three improvisations, and the first one was by far the best because no one is playing, no one is playing with the theory of the song in mind. It is it's all just like little you know expressions i kind of think of it like uh you know like a like a monet uh like uh like like one of the uh garden paintings or per perhaps one of those paintings that he he would do cathedrals it's not there is a form there you know we we look at we at the end of the day we step back and we look at it and go okay well that's i get this feeling or i get this i get this sense and i can see something but it's it's not about like the four walls or the you know or the particular the flowers or the water whatever any it's it's just a lot of moments of energy uh, expressed in such a way that they do they create they they begin to create a form and we had we had to sort of like allow ourselves allow our receptors to operate in that instinctual way for quite a few songs on this record but that one most most definitely and then when we had this we had this insane instrumental I had reams and reams of stanzas written and you know in this it, it, that, that that ended up some of which ended up being in the song and and i just i think one night i was worked up about something having a tough time or just been arguing with somebody or other and i didn't really i really didn't know how to a, a, apply a vocal reality to that song and i just remember going down in my uh basement studio and i was just sort of pissed and i just need to like i just, all i need to do is like get something out of my system and so i i just like chose that poem and i just kind of read it over the music and tried to stay out of the way of the music itself and there you have it you know it's it wasn't there wasn't a lot of labor figuring out how to make it work there was just a lot there was a lot of labor spent making sure that the attitude with which we all approached our role in that song was uh the same was similar like that it, it was a matter of feeling space and feeling uh, feeling where the music was taking us and then trying to get there at the same time as everybody else. And so you get, you know, you get these kind of tensions and, and it's just sort of like weird dynamic builds. And there's, there's a, there's something unsettling about it because it was completely unsettled. 
I mean, I mean, that's, I think that actually worked. Yeah, that, that turn of phrase actually kind of works here because we had never discussed or settled on anything. So why, why wouldn't it feel unsettling? Right. No, uh, but, but long answer there, being able to pursue those avenues is something that we as a group had to earn the right to do. You know, it's not something we could have done. It's not something I could have hired three studio musicians to do. It's something that the four of us, because we're, because we're a band, because we're a unit, we understand that occasionally our roles are insignificant in some, in, in such a way that if we, realize that insignificance then we can support the the idea of the song a little bit better it's it's yeah it's kind of high pollutant stuff but uh well, fun, like fun a, to do it's fun to do yeah like uh like uh lee ronaldo stuff with sonic youth like that's Pre- you know that's, well, that's sort of where and, I, you know and you know sonic sonic youth sonic youth was the first it was the first show i ever saw when i was a kid i saw sonic youth wow. super chunk boredoms uh on browns island richmond virginia the second show i saw was nirvana half japanese and beat happening or something like that. Great lineup. So and I was I was really I was really young. But but fortunately for me, and I'm, I I really like thank thanks to Nirvana and Sonic Youth for bringing those type of bills out uh, on the road for 11, 12 year old kids like me mm-hmm. from the who lived in, deep in the country. Like not only did I not know how insanely interesting what I was seeing was, but I didn't know that it there was something different. I didn't know that it had. I didn't know that it was. I didn't know that I was seeing something special. I just thought, well, this is this is the way you, you know, see Lee Ronaldo and Thurston Moore and Tim Gordon pull 30 guitars a piece out on the stage so they can play a set. And every song is like a different guitar. Every song's got, it's like completely strange. Like there's no way you've rehearsed that part before. You know, everything right. feels like it's equally about to fall apart and also transcendent, sublime beauty in, in that chaos. And that's, that is something I, where where stylistically we don't sound a thing like Sonic Youth, it, the spirit of that was something that was that taught me how to play music. You know that was that was my first experience seeing, and the, I think I think we played uh, when I was eleven, I was or twelve or something when I was graduating from middle school. It was like one of the first shows that I ever played in front of people. We just did Sonic Youth and Nirvana covers. I mean, it was kind of amazing. And so you know, so I've always had that idea that like, look, the instruments like. The instrument should come into focus and go out of focus mm-hmm. and it's up and you don't have to apply any rationale just when you feel like when it feels like exploding let it explode when it feels like tightening up and becoming a, a narrative instrument then let it be that but you know the thing that i think that that a lot of people uh you know tangential to the to the band over the years haven't understood is is that that where our music is kind of complex. I mean, it is it is certainly not the simplest thing to play. More importantly than that, it's like I I being playing music is difficult for me. It's I've never been. It's not it's not easy. It's not like a thing that just uh, the tech technical aspects of music just don't don't come easily to me. Music, the melody comes easy. You know, harmony becomes instinctual. But but like as far as as far as playing it. If it's not going to be easy, if I'm not a, if I'm not like a um, you know prodigy of fluidity and dynamics and technique, then I should relish the difficulty and the edge that I've got because if I didn't have that, I would be able to. I, that would be another thing that would be inimitable for for you know for the prodigies and the fluid musicians. There, the, the the difficulty is finding grit, is finding attitude, is finding character because you've you know sort of bread bread your technique out of it or something or 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 simply put everybody's expression falls on this somewhere on the scale between complete full true art which is like impossible and and very very jagged and very and very difficult to digest and then pop music which is like saccharine sweet and somewhere in the midst of that is how we all choose to play our thing and i just you know i don't have a choice mine's mine's going to be a little rough so yeah, so we try to play like really complicated music uh, to, I, I don't know if it's like to hide that fact or to highlight that fact, but I think sometimes when we're making records that I'm right, I, like I enjoy writing so far beyond my technical capacity as, as, a, as a performer that 
it's just that fact where like if you're you know if you're always shooting well beyond your capabilities then at least you're probably going to land one you know millimeter beyond what you've been capable of in the past and i think that that's it's it's just that that's i mean i'm just, i'm just describing like many different types of mindsets uh to create but you know the records come from those uh, subconscious things that you know I like I talk about them in the press and we talk about them before we do in the music when we get in, when we get into play it's just and I hope we you know I hope our instincts are good and I hope our chemistry is good I hope that we have a good back and forth um, and I and you know I think with, with Stone we really wanted to create you know like a bit of a mission statement for for where we are now mm -hmm. uh, I think we should always you know maybe, maybe we should always do that every record we put out should be a mission statement for where we are now that might seem self-evident but um the alternative is to try to improve on some model that you set up in the past and i think that that can for, for a band like us can be very faulty thinking because it's just hey can 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 we improve something that we've already done well i think i think maybe yes but i think it's more important to understand what we've done well and then to ignore it so that we can focus on something that we want to be able to do well uh through our music yeah. Well, I'll wrap up by saying where you yeah, all sorry. landed on stone is perfectly what I wanted to hear right now. So yeah, for everything that's going I, on in did, your, we did too. We yeah. For everything that's going on in your lives, it, it landed so well as a listener, you know, and I think that's, that's one of the great marriages, right? I mean, that's how yeah, I would think that's how you hope. It's like, you can do one thing, but for it to go out there in the world and become someone else's like, it's a powerful record. It's a beautiful record. And I yeah, let it wash over me when I needed to. And I dig in when I need to, and that's that's all I could ask for. Yeah, because it because because I think the the best records in my life that, that I that I haven't been part of the the great records for me are the records that I maybe maybe I just like it the first time I hear it. Maybe I don't even like it. It doesn't really the first listen's like completely immaterial to me. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just to it's just to begin to gain familiarity with the record. But I, but like I enjoy. If I if the records qual got the quality such that I can get to my twentieth listen, I enjoy that twentieth listen because it's that's where I start to hear not not the obvious stuff that mm -hmm. that you know not not just the chords and the and and the textures and the the legitimate melodies, but the the breathing, you know, the air, the attitude, the swagger, all that stuff, which I think is much more important about music. You know, like once you've got a good hook then it's then it's your duty as a musician to make it an interesting song you know because writing a good hook's not i'm not saying that that's easy i'm saying once you've been fortunate enough to have been blessed with a good hook or any hook at all even a bad one uh then it's your job to take that hook and do something cool with it you know because if you do what if you do what we've already heard with it no one's no one cares i mean i don't think it's got staying power i think I think that, you know, one thing that I, I still love doing, and I think the, the, you know, the modern musical climate's made this more difficult by the, by the day, but it's like, we all really want to find a record that we've never heard before that's just going to be completely challenging and blow us away. You know, you want to find the early material by some band that everybody's heard of, but you want to find that one song that's just the most amazing thing they've ever written that no one's ever heard. You want to have that secret forbidden knowledge. Um, I think that that's, a difficult thing to achieve these days but what one thing that we we set out we set out for and we just hope that we can get there is to create a compelling listen that can that can be listened to in that sort of superficial like yeah like doing household chores or whatever and it's and it's on and there's some there's something there that's fun for that but then for the dedicated headphone listener that there's there's some meat on that bone as well. And then, you know, that it feels good when you're driving in your car or walking out on the street that there's, you know, there's a blanket of atmosphere that, that, ta that takes you out of reality just for a little bit, you know, and that's, that's part of, that's part of music. Well, John, thank you for yeah. giving a damn. Yeah. Anyway, all these years. <laughs> yeah. I really mean I really... that. Thank you for giving a damn and doing what you guys yeah, of do. Of course. Yeah. Uh, congratulations on this record. And uh, I appreciate you taking the time to talk all about this. It's been one of my, uh, yeah more fun uh, conversations I'll have probably all week. So <laughs> awesome. Yeah. <laughs> well, I love talking. I love talking about music. I would talk about somebody else's music, but unfortunately I'm here to uh, promote our, our records. So. Yeah. We'll do that next time.
Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yeah. Take care and uh, I'll course. see you around. Yes, indeed. And thanks to my guest. Also, thanks to you for uh, for checking out the episode in the series. Before you get out of here, hit that subscribe button. Again, uh, you get three brand new interviews every single week. New and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at uh, right here on YouTube or, of course, anywhere in podcast land, including iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podchaser, NPR, or WFPK.org as well. A great way to keep up with your favorite artists and discover new ones as well. Then after that, actually head over to WFPK.org. That's where I do a show, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern. It's an hour full of song premieres, music news, anniversary spins, bonus interviews, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern at WFPK.org. Consequence has your music and film news. You can also find me on the social media spots, uh, Facebook, Instagram, mostly on Twitter. All three of them, the address is at Kyle Meredith. Do hope you like and follow along. That does it for another edition. I'm Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time.